Hi there General Math students. This is the first video for the trigonometry unit in General Math 3 and we're starting with Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, this theorem dates back around 2,500 years so it's very old but it's as true today as it was back then when it was first mathematically proven. So Pythagoras' theorem only relates to right angle triangles. Uh, and what it says, I mean, we have this equation for Pythagoras' theorem, but what, basically what it's saying is that if you take the longest side of a triangle, which we call the hypotenuse, and you square it, then that result will be equal to the two shorter sides squared and added. So, for instance, if I showed you a, a, an example like this one, so we just have a right angle triangle uh, like this and if for instance the sides were 3, 4 and 5, well this would work out because we know that 5 squared is 25, now 3 squared is 9 plus 4 squared 16 well 9 and 16 does give 25 so in a 3 4 5 triangle like this Pythagoras Pythagoras's theorem is demonstrated so let's look at the numerical examples that we have in our booklet in the first one on the leftmost here we're asked to find the hypotenuse in this case which I'll just call X it doesn't really matter what letter you call it, as so long as you identify it. Now, in this case, we know that x squared is equal to the other two sides squared and added. Now, that isn't completely useful to us at the moment because we have x squared equals. So x squared is the subject of the equation. Of course, we need x to be the subject of the equation. So that means that this squared needs to go over the other side of the equal sign and do the opposite to square. The opposite mathematical operation to square is, of course, a square root. So you, that might uh, seem familiar now that you need to take a square root to get the answer in the Pythagoras' theorem. So you might want to pause the video and put that into the calculator and see if you can get the correct answer. Now using the calculator, I find the best way, especially if you've got the, the TI Inspire or even on your scientific calculator, the best way is to put it all in in one go. Okay, so I'm going to put this, oh, that's not quite working, let's put this in 12 squared plus, whoops, get a square root sign back, 12 squared plus 5 squared. So that's all in there in one go and we should get 13 centimetres there. So you might want to pause the video at this stage and go ahead and try uh, the next example then I'll have a go at it. Okay so this one's really similar. Once again we're finding the hypotenuse I'll call it x again. Now I'm just going to go straight to the square root sign. I know that if I'm finding the hypotenuse each and every time it's going to be the square root of the other two sides squared and added. So you might want to try putting that into the calculator uh, and you should be getting 8.9 centimeters rounding to one decimal place it doesn't matter if you went to a few more decimal places that's fine okay <clears throat> now you might want to pause and try these next two especially if you've seen Pythagoras theorem before and you're you're feeling quite confident however I just want to warn you there is something different about these two before you embark on them so go ahead and have a go at them then I'll show you how to do them okay I'll have a go at it. So, I'm just going to call this unknown side here x. Now, beware. x is not the hypotenuse in this case. We're trying to find one of the shorter sides. 
So we know that 15 squared is equal to uh, x squared plus 12 squared. So I'm going to uh, endeavour to get x on its own here. So that means taking that 12 squared over to the other side and subtracting it. You might remember that rearranging business. And then taking this square over the other side. And what we end up with basically is that x is equal to the square root of 15 squared take 12 squared. So when, look, in a nutshell, what it boils down to is that when you're finding one of the shorter sides, instead of having a plus in between like we did when we're finding the longest side, the hypotenuse, we have a minus in between. That's all it is. Try putting that into the calculator. You should get 9 metres for that one. Okay, so for this last one, I'm just going to skip straight through to the, the, the square root sign. Call this side here x. Now, it's one of the shorter sides, so instead of having a plus in between, I'm going to go straight to having the minus in between. Now, one of the important things to remember is that you need to have the longest side in front with the, if, uh, in the, under the square root sign. You couldn't have 3.2 squared take 8.7 squared. It just wouldn't work. So always have the longest side first. Okay, so for this one, you should get 8.09 centimetres. So what it all boils down to is that if you're trying to find the hypotenuse, then you're going to have a plus in between under the square root sign. If you're trying to find one of the shorter sides, well, then you're going to have a negative underneath. But you've got to put that bigger number first. OK, so go ahead and uh, look at the questions in the description for the video. Uh, and as usual, I'm always there in the classroom for you. Uh, so if you're having any trouble with these, make sure you consult with me.